Let's look at how you might create an adder in VHDL. Okay. And what would we want to do? If you were just sitting down at a computer and you wanted to add two numbers, what, what would be the first thing you do? A plus B, right? You're like, oh, A plus B. And in computer programming, sometimes that actually works. You know, int A, B, A plus B equals the sum, or sum equals A plus B. But in VHDL, we know that that's not always as simple. So let's look at how we could use the plus sign in order to create an adder. All right. So I walk up to you, and I do the following. I have created a test bench, and it is called adder 4-bit TB. And all we're going to do is instantiate a system called adder 4-bit TB, TB. And it's got A and B as the inputs, and they're 4 bits. There you have R of type standard logic vector, which we usually use for all of our ports. Then you have a sum, and the sum is 4 bits. And you have a carry out, of course, and it's a single bit. And what we're going to do is we are going to exhaustively test this thing. And I'm going to do it with a for loop. And just think about how I'm going to do this. Okay? I want to drive in every possible combination of inputs in order to exhaustively stimulate this thing. Because I need to see what the worst case scenario is in terms of delay. So I do this with two nested for loops. This for loop right here is going to create an integer type or an integer signal called i, and it does it automatically for you in a for loop. Okay? So you don't have to do signal i. So you say for i, and then for some reason it says in, and then it's 0 to 15. So what's going to happen is i is going to be an integer, and it will count from 0 to 15, incrementing by 1 every time this loop executes. Okay? Then within that loop, I am going to create a nested for loop, which for every increment of i, I am going to increment another variable, which is j. Okay? This is just standard nested for loops. And j will also go from 0 to 15. And what's going to happen is that this inner loop will crank through, counting from j from 0 to 15, and then it gets done, and then i will increment to the next value, and then j will go 0 to 15, and then i will increment up to its next value, and so forth. The reason we did that is because within the final nest, we can take i and j and cast them back to be 4-bit values that are standard logic vector that we can attach to a and b. And that's going to drive every possible scenario into this thing. So what I do is I say a test bench gets assigned, and I'm going to convert or cast an integer to standard logic vector. If you recall, you have to do it in two steps. The first is to, is to convert it to the type unsigned. And that puppy right there, that function, is contained within the numeric STD. So you've got to have the numeric STD. And you tell it to do four bits. So you take this integer, this 32-bit integer, and you convert it to unsigned. And then once it's unsigned, a four-bit unsigned, you can then cast it to standard logic vector. And that is great because that is what the actual test vectors are going to be. Does that look good? Then you have, to term, you have to suspend the loop, so you put your wait statement right here. All right, but I really would like to create an adder. So now I'm going to come up to here, and let's go ahead and grab our port definition. Boop. And actually, I want more than that. I'm going to go boop, boop. All right, so I come over to here, and I'm going to go add to project, new file, and I'm going to call this adder, adder for bit, a boom. Okay. I pop this puppy open, double click, and I go ahead, I get my libraries down, and now I'm ready to create my entity. So I go entity adder 4-bit ports, blah, and entity, and now I'm ready to do architecture adder 4-bit arc of adder 4-bit is, and I come down here and I go begin, and I come down here and I go end architecture, and I'm ready to warm the compiler up. Been a long weekend. Compile all. Error. Does anybody see what it is? Is. Yes. Compile all. Oh. All right. Are we ready? Are we ready? I'm going to write just a brain dead, you know, this is like programming when you're in, what, third grade. So I'm a third grader. And I'm like, oh, yes, yeah, dodgeball. Sum is equal to A plus B. Okay, so there I did it. I'm a coder, right? Does that work? 
Hell no. Doesn't work at all. Okay. Why doesn't it work? Well, numeric STD has a plus sign, but it only works on what types? Standard logic vector. Okay. All right. Well, that's cool. So what we would need? To, no, but what did you say? Say standard logic vector. Vector? It's vector number one. Number two, it's unsigned. Okay, it only works on unsigned. So really, what I need to do is I need to take a and b, which are in, coming in as standard logic vector, and and it wouldn't it be easy just to convert them to unsigned, add them together, get a sum that's unsigned, and then convert the sum back to standard logic vector. That would be pretty cool. And in fact, I would like to do that. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple steps. I'm going to take a and I'm going to convert it to unsigned. And, and the conversion is simply unsigned. So all I do is I type unsigned. Now, I'm building this up. This is not going to work as I'm typing, okay? just like the first step didn't work. Okay? So now I'm sitting here, and I've converted A and B to unsigned. Life is so good. What's the problem? Sum is not unsigned. Okay? Sum is standard logged vector. So I need to create an internal signal, which is of type unsigned. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go, all right, let's do this. Let's go signal. Why don't we call it something like sum uh, unsigned, something like that. Sun unsigned. And let's give it the type unsigned, which comes from numeric, or it comes from numeric STD. And now I just want to make it go from blank down to zero. Boom. Now I ask you the following. Is this going to work? if I make it the same size as A and B? No. So we got the third level of complexity here. Why won't it work? You're adding two 4-bit numbers together, which sounds great, except the sum could actually be how big? 5 bits, OK? Because you could have a 4-bit sum and a carry. So what we really would like to do is, why don't we make a 5-bit unsigned sum so let's come over to here and make this 4 down to 0. And then that gives us a 5-bit vector. And watch this. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to say sum unsigned. And I'm creating this interim you know, result. But I have A and B are still freaking 4 bits. What can we do to a 4-bit vector to make it 5 bits without changing its value? Concatenate it with a 0. 0? concatenate it with A. You can do it right within the function. How easy is that? All I did was I padded a leading zero on it. Nothing changed except that I now have A and B, and they're five bits. Well, that was so cool, though, except now I have sum, and it's a five-bit value. What do I need to do with it? I need to pluck its bottom four bits, cast them back to standard logic vector, and then that's the output. So let's do that first. Okay, so let's start with sum gets assigned, and I have at my disposal sum unsigned 3 down to 0. But I need to convert it, and I'm using convert and cast totally randomly and interchangeably for no reason. Okay, And this is sum. I have this puppy. I've plucked the four bottom bits. But I need to convert it from unsigned back to standard logic vector. So what I need to do is I need to put this within a function that's called standard logic vector. And now I've got what I needed. Okay? All right, so I feel pretty good about this. Except you know what? There's one other output I need to produce. What did I forget about? Carry out. Did I create my carry out? I absolutely did. It's the fifth bit in this sum. So all I need to do is come right here and say, all right, look, C out for my entire adder is equal to what? It's sum unsigned bit 4, but that is still as an unsigned data type. So I need to put it into a conversion function called standard logic vector, and now I think I got it. How's that looking? There's probably a few things messed up. Here, where are, you, where are we looking? Yeah, it ain't no freaking vector. You don't need that. Yeah, first of all, this is stupid. A zero is a zero is a zero. Okay? 
It's only a positive or negative number if it's a vector. Okay? So I actually don't even need that thing. So you're right. You're totally right. You don't even need it. What was the other thing you found? Yeah, and that happened a long time ago. So you could have said something a while ago. You know what I mean? Look at that loser up there. He typed a plus sign. Tell me. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Let's try to compile it. <laughs> it was successful. Boom. Let us now go ahead and simulate this, and let's see what happens. I'm going to double click on my test bench, and here it comes. I'm going to say add to wave. Let's do all, all items in design just to see what's going on here. Because there's a whole lot of stuff happening. I'm, does anybody remember what my wait statement was? It was 30 nanoseconds. This thing's going to run forever. Okay, because 0 to 15, and then for each one of those increments, you have 15 in there. That's going to be 16 times 16, which is 256 multiplied by 30. So it's just going to be long. Okay, and I'm gonna just go change this. Let's just go up. I don't even know. 100 microseconds. Boom. Let's go see what happened. All right. So there's something happening. Oh, look at all that. There's some data. So I zoom in on this thing, and the first thing I'm interested in is A and B as the test bench. Okay. So here's A and B. First of all, let's look at this as unsigned numbers. So I'm gonna change the radix to unsigned. And I have A is equal to a 0, and look at B. B is going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 15, and then it rolls over, and then it starts counting again. So A went to a 1, B is going 1, 2, 3. Look at the sum. The sum is now simply 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3. Woo this is pretty sweet, isn't it? it? Looks like it's working. Okay? We don't know what the carry out would be. Oh, look at this. We got our first carry out. 1 plus 14 is 15. 1 plus 15 is what? 0 with a carry. Nice. So that kind of worked. All right, and then you go, okay, life is good. What's all this stuff down here? This stuff's stupid. I don't even need that. We just have this. So I start zooming out, and I just look at all these things and go, oh, this is so nice. This is so nice. Could you look at these and figure out if this is working? No, you got to go this fast. <laughs> you could for a 4-bit adder. Okay? You're going to do an 8-bit adder. Okay? Could you figure it out? Could you look at that? If, it's, if you have an 8-bit adder and you're going to do this exhaustive testing, how many input vectors do you need in order to get all of them stimulated? 65,000, 65, right? Because you got A is going to go from 0 to 255, and for each one of those steps, B is going to go from 0 to 255. So it's 256 times 256, which is 60, whatever, 5,000, or OK? So it's a lot. You're not going to be able to sit there and, and figure this out. Do you have the capability, OK? I'm just asking. Do you have the capability to write a test bench which could actually check whether the answer was correct? You, you think so? Well, let's go look at this. I'm going to look at the test bench. I just want to, I'm just thinking out loud here. I look at this test bench, and I'm in this for loop. And I'm sitting there going, OK, after I do this wait, how can I check that the sum is right? Do I have a way that I could easily create the sum in the test bench using something that is unsynthesizable but get the right sum? Yeah, what is it? What are my variables? I have at my disposal i and j. I could say i plus j is equal to something. That should be the sum. And I could check that against my circuit and make sure that the circuit actually has the right output. Now, you would still have to take that sum because it's going to be a 5-bit value. And you would have to convert it into unsigned, break it up, and check whether you had this 4-bit sum correct and the 1-bit carry out correct. But you could do it by creating a duplicate arithmetic in the test bench. This is how you do real circuitry. You always have a logic circuit that's implemented with gates that creates some answer. Okay? 
And then in the test bench, you always create the exact same answer, but using the built-in unsynthesizable functions that are provided within BHDL. Okay? So you could do that. 